welcome to the Spikehead podcast. It has only taken me two week, two weeks, two months this time to actually get one of these going again. So that's an improvement. Eventually, I'll get this down monthly. I promise you all. But today, it has been sequel month in good old November. Uh, we have yet to get Creed to a wreck at Ralph, unfortunately, as we are not American. But we did have one small sequel come out, and we'll get to that momentarily. We'll also be talking about a few trailers later on. Uh, but to start off with, we had a little film called The Crimes of Grindelwald come out. Second film in the Harry Potter, not Harry Potter, I don't like calling it the Harry Potter universe anymore. It's the Wizarding World universe. Uh, is, oh yeah, speaking of which, this is my guest Liz. I should have introduced her at the start, but there you go. I'm just useless. <laughs> Anyway, Crimes of Grind the World, you all know my views on the film from my review. Click it in the card tab, which is going to be over, over there somewhere. I'm going to guess <laughs> it's, it's over there. It's over there, somewhere in that general direction. But Liz, tell me, what the, what are your overall thoughts about it? Before we get into the spoiler talk, what was your overall summary of it? Um, beginning, absolutely excited and ecstatic. Midway through, disappointed. At the end, confused and... I'm not going to say happy, but I think it was a good twist. Not, it wasn't even a good twist. It was good in certain aspects, which I'll explain when we get to the spoiler bit, because it's hard to describe without the spoiler. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was okay. I think they could have done some stuff better. And I don't think it was as good as the first by any means. Oh yeah, definitely not. Like the first one, I'll be straight. I hate the last Harry Potter films. That was just me. I'm a bit of a book elitist. <laughs> In that kind of sense, so the f- new one came along. I was like, I'll watch it, see what it's like. It's a complete, it's basically a blank slate. Keyword there, guys, blank slate, which they seem to have forgotten <laughs> about in this one. And I fell in love with the world all over again, so I was hyped for this one. As literally, yeah, we know we're in the world from the source material, but it's like maybe percentage wise in the Harry Potter universe, maybe like 4% or less, mm. pretty much, like very small amount. So it's like, how can you miss anything out in? Five bucks, but we are going to get into that. But um, to start off with, with the film, this is a full spoiler discussion, by the way. So if you're not clicking away yet, do so now. If you stay around, don't come bitch to me later. <laughs> um, so first off, original scene, apart from Scamander, Dumbledore, and Grin the Wall, most of the cast are relatively originals, created by mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling. And we're going to talk about a few of them, especially about some of the characters they mess up. This film did feel very clustered. It was there very... were a lot of main characters and it was very hard for them to fit enough of everyone in. It was good that they got the characters, it was interesting, but they didn't have enough time to develop some of them. Some yeah. of them we knew from the first film, so it didn't need developing as much, and then some they sort of just left on the back bench and you were left like... Yeah, it was literally like a lot of different plots fighting for screen time, unless mm. it's like a mini-series that is never going to work out. <laughs> One character who was... By all means, a lot of people's favourite in the first one was Queenie. And <gasps> no, <laughs> what did they do to Queenie in this? So, so, are we starting from the beginning with Queenie? From I mean, when she first comes in? Because, I want to talk about her in general, because from the first one we established that, like, you first meet you think, oh, you're, you're a bit ditzy, and she's basically such a good legament that she mm. can read people without meaning to, effectively. That's the big establishment of her. Yeah. Then you find she's not just this ditzy... New Yorker gal. She's actually very intelligent, very smart. She was very sort of flirtatious, but she was also not dominant with it, which I loved because getting like a very quiet character that could easily just shoot someone down like that was great. Do you know what I mean? She managed to unravel Jacob instantly. The same with Newt. She even got under Newt's skin. And yeah. Newt was very, his character's very media. You know, nothing gets to him. Or he. Yeah, he's very ha- mellow. Yeah, when it comes to people, he's very blank if that makes sense you can see his reactions with the animals but with humans it's less so he's just more awkward around them yeah he doesn't like humans as much but that's like as you can probably gather like we really like queen in the first one but in this one i can't believe jk rowland has actually <laughs> wrote this film because as someone that's always on twitter that will do a james gunn and respond to trump tweets all the time and always tweet about progression and equality and all that queenie date rapes jacob <laughs> pretty much i mean the first scene if you're watching this and you've not seen the film and you don't care about spoilers we should probably explain yeah. <laughs> um, she so the first time we see queenie and jacob it's very obvious that something's wrong with jacob they turn up on the spot yeah. to see newt um, they announce they're getting engaged jacob's ecstatic and has this really 
sort of yeah, face a... on and you can tell something's wrong basically it was love potion oh no not even love potion it was a love spell because Newt managed spell, yeah. to undo it um so yeah and that is addressed but in addressing it the relationship between jacob and queenie goes mm-hmm. i'm gonna say go south because that's effectively they work building this really romantic relationship and by the end of the first film you're like oh my gosh yes finally something nice happened for them and it just turns out yeah uh, they could have at least given it another film of hope and happiness no it's just it just really is a weird one because jacob comes out and i thought oh god what have they done to jacob is it have they just made him the current belief now mm-hmm. but let's reveal that because jacob looks queenie already he wants to marry only reason he doesn't want to marry is because like there's prejudice against no magics in America and yeah, he doesn't and want to he values Queenie and doesn't yeah. want Queenie to get arrested and end up in jail because that would hurt him and she makes him the bad guy for it um, basically, but it's not date rape essentially because he does want to be with her but he can't say yes because of basic prejudice back then and she gets in the smell and he has to be pulled out of it and then there's this argument in the street and why does Jacob say that annoys her because my one of, screen... one of my favourite things is that Jacob says is when were you going to tell me when we started having kids yeah. because I want to be with you but I can't put you through that I can't put you through going to jail and I can't go through the rigmarole because that would kill me and she goes what about me and she basically becomes very self-centred about she yeah. doesn't understand Jacob cares for her she more thinks about her and her only sort of thing yeah and like Jacob says something to her and she gets really messed up it's like oh I didn't mean that like, what did he say because in my cinema like crazy cuts out is that what he says I didn't hear what he said properly he, he didn't actually say it she read it from his thoughts oh okay okay she, yeah no it, it was it was he, go, he goes you know what you and then she went really sort of I think I'm crazy and it was just I mean, and then she just operates on this. It is, it is crazy. She, uh, I mean, she basically drugged him into getting married because he said no. Yeah, and, it, <laughs> and it's played as a joke. And Which, I don't know. If it was reversed, there would be an uproar. There would be a massive uproar. It and would be. I think because it was a woman, it was joked off. And it's not till later on in the film you realise the seriousness of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I've never plot point like there's this thing about this whole i'm not gonna get into it because this whole confusing thing about a strange and a like don't you shout i really like stuff. that <laughs> yeah but it's so confusing. oh it's messed up it's this, like this du- film's really dark compared to the rest like you thought films four five six and seven were dark this this takes dark to a whole new level i mean if you don't mind me sort of jumping no, ahead to up. plot points there's chill like killing of babies not like harry potter cute killing like actual death of kids death of a family straight away in there there's no remorse there's splitting families up there's um what well, this is, you know it's it's yeah they, they, i think they killed off two different children in this one didn't they like yeah, they did. without That's really a... a second one of them was without a second thought one of them was a plot point which i get which is dumb but we'll yeah, get to that later. yeah 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 <laughs> no that's that's something that's what i get to later on but the whole there's like this whole strange subplot where Chris trying to find out who he is and oh speaking of which like Chris being alive I was complaining about how that's not really explained it, it, you kind of know he's alive at the end of the first one because you see a bit of his obscurious fly off yeah. how he knows to go to Paris and find his family God knows and he's less edgy looking in this one he is less edgy looking but I think <laughs> that's to do with Nagimi because if you, oh, I, 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 I know I know how you feel <laughs> on Nagimi but if you think about it Dumbledore's main reason for Newt finding him was he needed that love and compassion and we all know how much Dumbledore loves love and compassion but you know he says he was lacking that and I think Nagimi gave him that which made him more kind it opened him up as a person I I I know how you feel about Nagimi but I liked her alongside his character I think they should have gone more into her storyline but I liked her alongside his character I like it but we're gonna get into it so we'll get into this Nagini I mean apart from certainly Nagini oh you're a woman like two things bugged me one was the whole you're in the circus of freaks because you turn to a snake it's like well basically your curse is you're sort of crossed between an animagus and a werewolf where <laughs> when you turn to an animal you lose all your mind basically and when they're not gonna be able to turn back but it's like until then you're basically an animagus about all the years of training mm-hmm. so why are you a freak for that already like you could just be an animagus you could be making up that she's a mal- mal- metalingus how do you pronounce it i'm not too sure and maledictus i i, I, I get tongue-tied so it <laughs> but um no i i i agree with that there's i get it's a blood curse i get it's a rare blood curse and she's a rare 
Um, well, she's from a rare tribe, they say, don't they? She's one of the last of her tribe, and I get that. But again, her, her whole show wasn't that she was a rare beauty, it was that she was beautiful and cursed. Yeah. Which, like you say, Lupin isn't in a freak show. Yeah, exactly. And, um, <laughs> like... It could easily be like, and, like she could literally just be a random enemy, just calling the Gideon ironically. And they yeah. could literally wreck on her so easy, but she, she had no real reason to be in there apart from name value. Well, I get like, the credence bit, but there's not enough development of it. She literally shows up and just like, oh, the is this Asian girl and she's with credence, and she just sort of stands there and looks sad a lot. Yeah. You don't really see a moment. There. There's a bit in the trailer where they're sat on the roof and Creed is like doing this, this He's big showing him, thing. Yeah. That's not in the film. No, but that I looks like such a good film as well, yeah. And I think that shows the characters' development with one another. Maybe not in the depths we would like, but what I hope, there's three more films to come out. If they, I'm really excited, and I'm sorry, but I am, to see how Nagini goes from Credence to Voldemort, especially because she doesn't like Grindelwald. Yeah, she's not going to... She does not like Grindelwald at all and his morals. And his morals are almost a stepping stone for Voldemort, which... I'm sure we'll get into later, but again, that's really interesting to me because she's at, she's visiting Dumbledore. She wants to be on Dumbledore's side, and it's like, how did it go from one to the other? No, I feel like she's going to be a, she'll be permanently a snake by that point. That sense Voldemort rolls around. <laughs> that's what I think. Or maybe like it's become a snake before. Could you think Chamber of Secrets historically happens in like forty two mm. and when the war, the battle between Dumbledore and Dumbledore was in nineteen forty five and the World War Two because not so about connections at all there, JK, but. <laughs> Like I said, we'll get into timelines later because, JK, you really f***ed with the timelines. It does not make sense. And I did my research. <laughs> I was, I was after the was not cinema. even born yet, yet she's randomly there in the back. I don't even see her clearly. You just hear her say, oh, oh it's no, I, 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 I loved McGonagall being there. Uh, the th Someone raised a point, though. Wasn't Dumbledore the Transfiguration teacher? He's supposed to be. I think that Pan's a bit in the film where he explains why he went to Dark Arts. Okay. Like, he's supposed to be a Transfiguration teacher, but McGonagall, the canonly, is not supposed to be born. They're like... I get it's your books, JK, you can change what you want, but you've literally created Pottermore back in like 2011 or something like that. And it's like, hey, this is all the law, this is all you need to know. And now it's just like, oh, that law you've been reading for years, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't actually that. look up on when McGonagall was born, but I did. He's born in the 30s, I think. I'm just going to Google that quickly. You no, it's you fine. But um, I, I, I honestly, I loved her attitude. I didn't get how her and Dumbledore were such good friends straight away. Because I thought that took time. Yeah, oh, yeah, 35. 35. This is set in ni uh, 1929, this yeah, one. So, so <laughs> unless McGonagall is about to come into maternity leave like, in a few years. Yeah, maybe maybe it's her daughter. Maybe. Hmm. I love how the teachers yeah. seem to be the same people yeah. over and over again. But, yeah. but no, I, I, what I loved is when she, uh, there's a little bit where it's just pure McGonagall, like the bit where she says, have a biscuit potter. It was just that, basically. Um, the, uh, I've got greeting. Yeah, no. This 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 woman gets this woman gets a uh, woman student gets cursed by the Lestrange girl. And um, I, what I love is they're all chasing after the Lestrange girl. And McGonagall fixes this girl to, so she could speak again because the mouth disappeared. And she yeah. goes, "It was Lestrange." And McGonagall just goes, Yoop, and shuts her <laughs> back up again. And that for me was just oh. perfect McGonagall. That was Book McGonagall coming back out. See. And I like Book McGonagall. Oh, McGonagall is great. Maggie Spector was great as McGonagall, but going back to you were talking about Sorry. the strange there. Oh yes. Like I was in the first film, I was one of the only people because we saw it at the first midnight showing to pick up that Lestrange because it was so subtle. Yeah. And I'm glad they brought her back. I am. I'm, it's interesting I'm to see the Lestrange family history because Bellatrix is such. She's such a commercialised character now. In the book, she wasn't. She was just badass. But yeah. in the film, she became quite commercialised. And I think that's down to Helen Bottom Carter, who I love. Um, but it was interesting to see the history and know that they're not a straightforward family. Yeah, well, with the strange things, I'm glad you brought up the letter of strange. Is it letter of strange? Letter of strange? Lisa, like, Lita. I think, yeah. I think it's like written down as like letter of strange. I can yeah. never really pronounce it properly. But anyway, as you know from the first one, it's hit that her and you had a relationship at some point, And... Mm. Uh, of all the female characters in this, she is the best built because uh, Tina, like, just sort of becomes a love interest rather than a confident woman in this one. Yeah, Tina's sort of, she's, she's the backbench character. She's one of the most backbench characters we see. Her only purpose was to go, oh, hi, Newt. No, it was like, hi there, Mr. Scamander. Like, it's like, you're supposed to be adults. This is, this is very, 
like secondary high school. school girly. Oh, you, you like a different girl to me. Yeah. yeah, I did like the interaction between Tina and uh, and Newton's there. Uh, not not Newt, yeah. but Lestrange. I liked it. I liked that little. It was only for a short snippet, but I thought that was beautiful. Oh. Like the the ex meets the uh, current. Yeah. girlfriend and the thing is they got along really well you could see it they instantly clicked but newt was there like <laughs> awkward sad though yeah but to be fair the strange was being around both brothers there so that's a strange <laughs> one but anyway speaking of like little strange um she's the best of other cat like female in this like there's a whole back because the whole hogwarts backstory stuff that was amazing she I was love... really developed she and was. that was good i wish th i do wish they went more into her sort of childhood rather than yeah, and no, I did really like the Hogwarts stuff though, because I liked how cause she's a Slytherin in that, and the ones putting her are Gryffindors, and by stereotypes, it should be the reverse role. So I'm liking yeah. seeing these different roles and seeing the nasty Hufford. side of Gryffindor. Yeah, yeah. Because no one's black and white, no one's brave, not all Slytherins are bullies. Like the only thing I'm going to say, there wasn't enough Ravenclaw representation, but apart from that, I fully agree. I mean, it was nice to see the Slytherin. It. I know it was nice to see the Slytherin and Hufflepuff mingling as well. I liked because you don't normally see a. No, you just see them as themselves. But yeah. this was mute, and he just like loves people as they are, and I thought that was very good. But the whole, apart from the little strains, like twist is like a double twist towards the end that we'll talk about a little bit. Cricket is more involved to credence, but they build her up so well. She's a nice character, and then she dies. Spoiler alert! Yeah. <laughs> We've said spoilers at the I start, know, so um, sorry, uh, but no, she. Just, it was just how very, very blunt it was. It's stupid but, as well. Just like... She didn't. She didn't need to die. There was no reason for her to die. Also, the fact she dies means how in the world does the? Uh, this is another spoiler. How in the world does the Lestrange family tree carry on? And how do we get to Bellatrix? That that is an interesting. Well, to be fair, Bellatrix married into the Lestrange family. Everyone seems to forget that. But it's just like from what we established in this, is there's a main Lestrange that basically imperious rapes a woman that gives birth to Let, and then he gives birth to another baby here. Oh yeah, that's another was... rape warning as well there's yeah. not just date rape there's actual physical yeah. rape good old imperious curse but yeah well, that's being very serious because it's managing it to a woman this time yeah around. Good, good that, that's not jokey case. that's that's very dark and yeah. sinister and yeah very dark and then let us say what, what was I getting at here yeah then the whole thing's pretty much trying to find how he is and everyone thinks he's a long lost strange kid mm. there's like a double twist at the end and there's like oh you're the other strange kid and there's this I can't remember his name, there's like the coloured minister guy from Paris, and he's yeah. like, I've done a break of I've got to kill you. He and was Lestrange's like, half brother. Yeah. He? yeah. But I can't remember his damn name. I, no. I hate saying this because I don't like getting controversial like that, but it felt like Nagini and that minister were just there to fill ethnic tick boxes. Yeah. Because Nagini didn't have to be there, just like, oh, Nagini's Asian, that's actually all I knew about there it. There was a lot of back about that as well jk gave her reasons and i'm not going to go into it because i don't want to cause it's again thing. it's not for you know my opinions on that are quite open but yeah no, well, it, 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 it wasn't, like it wasn't based needed. off an india like name as well so. yeah it, that's that's jk's reasoning for doing it but i agree i think i do agree that jk's sort of doing a little a, a bit too little too late if that makes sense yeah. there wasn't enough cultural diversity in the original harry potter films and she's trying to bring it back with this one which is great it's not wrong that she's trying to bring it back but it's now, i don't know here's my opinion on like like i don't really get all political here but bugger okay, we're there now right cultural diversity i don't give an ass if what color you are in a film what sexuality you are what gender you are like the whole i was not enough women roles in film that's about mm. pay rates yeah, it's bullshit, the different rates to men and women. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit. But main women's like, go back to like, screen queens of the 70s and 80s, yeah. Ripley's, Eric Connor, just don't come at me that That's bullshit. an interesting thing when you said pay rates. How many female main characters are they in this and how much screen time did they get compared to the males? <sighs> there you go, lot. that's a good question for you. <laughs> we didn't enough. think about that beforehand. But. Not a lot. Letter gets a lot, but I, I preferred Young Letter to adult letter yeah honestly again i don't think I, I'm, I'm not sure about letter i really i really liked the character i don't think she should have been killed off no, i think it was interesting between her and newt's brother newt's brother i liked um 
I'm not sure why I liked him because he was quite quiet in the whole thing, but I like the. I, I think he was needed for Newt, if that made sense. Yeah, he was a very Percy Weasley esque character. He was Percy Weasley, but it was like mixed in with Fred or George, really, when you think about it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, because he had that friendly sort of looking out for his brother side. Yeah. But he did have that very ministry. We've got to do what's right, yeah. even if it's wrong, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I liked how he was a hugger. Because Percy Weasley would never have hugged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'll that would be bet. awkward, Voldemort. <gasps> Voldemort and Percy hugging would be so awkward. Oh, let's not get into Voldemort <laughs> hugs, please. Just, no. But the whole letter thing, like, letter to Sly, oh, no, psych mystery guy, that's not him because I accidentally, accidentally killed him by accident because I was on the Titanic and he was crying a lot, so I swatched the babies out and... He Do you drowned. know what? It wasn't even that... the Titanic. That's the sad thing. The Titanic wasn't sailing at the time, so it she's messed actually. that timeline up. If it is the Titanic, she's messed that timeline up as well. Actually, yeah, because they've only been like, yeah, hang on, 29. I don't know, hang on. I think, wasn't I it 19 think... or something? She was like, what? Like, she was like 9 or 10 at the time, give or take, and then how old you say she is in this? Um, I'm, I couldn't say. Basically, I've looked Titanic it up. Titanic was 1912. Credence <laughs> would have had to be born in. 80 between 87 and 88 i believe no 87 97 and 98 um thereabouts that's when he would have had to be born so she's a bit older than that yeah so again for him to be on the titanic he would have had to it would have had to be early 1900s or just well, before do you see what i mean it would have had to be mean, before the 1900s are, yeah i get a bit towards the big twist at the end there Sorry. but humble going more towards <laughs> the whole letter thing her death was Really dumb, basically, during the wars about to kill both the Scamander Brewers and Rick Letters, just like, Oi, you, wait. Make us, oh, I'm gonna go with you. Oh, no, psych, I'm just gonna cast a spell on you and burn. What is it with these part of films turning everyone into dust? Like, what's wrong with a good old corpse? <laughs> Do you know what I liked about the blue films, uh, blue flames? They reminded me of Philosopher's Stone and those flames. I mean, that's a nice little throwback. It was a little throwback, and I'm, I liked it. I'm thinking more of the actual death itself. It's just dumb oh, and pointless. Yeah. You build this whole. Like, the one character you build up prop... I feel like she's the only properly built up character that's built up well. Mm. Like, the whole film and this acts are off, and for all the build of the gym, I didn't even feel savage to I was just like, wait, what? Because <laughs> I was loving that character, and then she died. I'm just like, wow, you made a character I invested in. I'm not even sad about him dying, because I was just like, wait, did you really just, what? Hate, well, like what? I say, they've got three films left, and if they're killing off this many people this fast, then it's like, who's going to be left at the end of it? Yeah, but you don't need a big name that they kill off. Because in the weight of the cast there, there is a lot of... Oh, yeah, we did forget the last little bit about Quinny, actually. She turns heel at the end. Oh, yeah, no, um, so <laughs> basically the scene where there's all the blue fire, um, everyone who's worthy gets through. Queenie basically yells at Jacob, top of her voice. Yeah. Um, crazily. And Jacob's like, what the hell are you doing? And again, he thinks, he actually says the word crazy this time. Yeah. And she goes off with Grindelwald, which it's is... like, is it pity from her? And just the fact that this is, like we said earlier, she was basically reading people's minds about meaning to in the first one. And this one, unless Grindelwald's the best occlumency person ever, like, she could not see that he has dark intentions. She's like, oh, he's going to get us married. It's like, well... Uh, one point I'll go on to first is the whole point she wants to join Grindelwald is so she can marry Jacob, but she leaves Jacob to join Grindelwald's it's cause. It's like... Queenie got fucked. I, I will say Grindelwald is great at manipulation, and I love... This is why they've got Johnny Depp to do it. It's quite clear. Um, at first I was like, they're going to make him into Mad Hatter, they're going to make him into, <laughs> you know, Captain Jack. I, I was bricking it. But I do like his manipulation. No. I, I don't know if it is manipulation or if it's genuine being if that makes sense it's hard to tell especially the scene where the witch gets killed yeah do you know where he, he you know the... oh yeah we'll actually get into that momentarily because yeah speaking Sorry. of the world <laughs> for the crime of the world doesn't do a whole lot of crime no but uh, i think he's better than Voldemort already because Voldemort, we know him but personally everyone preferred bellatrix and umbridge to him as a villain because voldemort's a spoiled Voldemort... child basically pretty much and he spends Literally, oh, I can kill you. Just like, now I'm going to start chatting about 20 minutes about destiny and love and how much I hate it and how much I hate Muggleborns. Grindelwald just walks to a room, kills two parents, they move in, then you the hear Mama. They walk in as a oh, baby there. My heart. 
They just look I at honestly, it. Honestly, I was sobbing in the cinema. I could not. I could not deal with that scene. I could not. It was that, awful. That was brilliant. I. I. I it was brilliant, it's, but it was heart wrenching. How black face look? He just walks out. And they and weren't even bothered about it. That's what. So the coldness that, that just makes like makes him better because he just gets on with it, yeah. and it's just like, and just how dark it was. It wasn't like it's like oh my god, look at the bear. It's like no, we're just just yeah. do it slightly after you know what happened it's like well, they didn't even this guy means business and it was not he didn't even come because it wasn't him that killed the child it was one of his associates i they don't like even, the associate i don't no, know why she's there they, they didn't even talk to one another they literally walked in the room grindelwald went up to the child looked at the child thought hmm walked off and she just went yep boom dead and i was like they're all as sadistic as one another and that is scary it's terrifying yeah and Honestly, talking about Grit in the World, I really love Johnny Depp in this. Everyone seems to be on the fence, like, oh, this is an okay job. I was like, oh, I thought it was a bit flat. It's like, he spends the film manipulating. I think people are too scared to give him any props because of the controversy that happened with him. It was like last year at some point, there was a big thing about it. And I'm just going to say, look, I guarantee you, every three and five of these people you look up to has some skirt in the closet they're at, they're hiding. No one's perfect. Yeah, exactly. So I know some things saying... are worse than others, and we're not saying it's right. Yeah. But you're always going to find something, especially in the celeb world. It tends to be more more escalated, tends to be more out there, it tends to be more crazy. You know, none of the celebs that you see are really perfect. Yeah, none of them are. So whenever it's like, oh, this one's done this bad thing, I'm just like, I'm not surprised it's the celeb world. They do a lot of that shit. So I'm not saying what I did it was right, no. but I'm not like, because when I watch a film, I want to be lost in the world. Anything that happens outside of it, they're not those people. They're, they're these acting, characters. They're acting the characters. So we're coming to none Johnny Depp character as opposed to yeah, Johnny and Depp himself. His portrayal of the character yeah, rather than his personal The portrayal life. of the character is reserved and he's just like smooth. Like you mentioned that woman that dies in the circle. Oh, I love like, that. His genuineness. And the thing is, it looks like he's acting it. But again, Queenie can read minds for crying out loud. So unless she's absolutely awestruck, yeah. he's being genuine. He's got his words. He's like very smooth with his words. He convinced Queenie to come over to his side. He's just like like Queenie points one at me, he just walks up and he's like, I'm not going to harm you. He just lets her go. He's like, I'm just going to let you go. I'm just going to have a couple of words with you. Yeah. He's it, a smooth talker. Like, it's literally like a rally he has. And to be fair, that ministry official was dumb as shit. Yeah. One pulls one, I'm going to use the killing curse on you. It's like, Expelliarmus, yeah. Stupefy, Crystal Talus. But what I love is the way, in, so Voldemort's kill everyone. Very, you know. I don't want to say it, but very Nazi-ish in a way. He's, yeah. you know, that's what the Death Eaters effectively were in the books, even. Yeah. A lot of people have made that representation. Because um, everyone has to be like them, can't be any differences, things like that. One thing I love about Grindelwald is he is accepting of everyone. It, yeah, he'll kill you whether you're wizard or muggle. He does not care. Yeah. But he says... He doesn't say muggles are bad, he just says muggles have their uses, which again is so more sinister than just let's kill everyone. Yeah. It's let's use them. For example, that's how he gained Queenie's trust. He used a muggle. Yeah. He could have outright killed Jacob. He didn't. He yeah, used I took it. Queenie to... out too, but it's like, no, I don't want to kill wizards. It's like, we're a, like, he proves that's like, we're a special breed of people kind of deal. Yeah. You're just like, we're going to take our place, we're not going to take over. And it's carried over from the books as well. You. Yeah. Read the Rita Skeeter bit where it's talking about it interacts with Albus and Grindelwald. Mm. Not what's this thing that's kill our mother, it's like we're just going to take over. Yeah. That's completely different then. Which I think is out. more scary than wipe everyone out. Because wiping everyone out, yeah, fine. Do you know what I mean? It's scary <laughs> to an extent. To see it. <laughs> saying, saying it's, you're going to use them, that could mean anything from torture to slavery to, you know, to just, again, having that social status, which I think. You yeah. know, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting prospect. And what he's saying, if you actually listen to it in the film, to his big speech in the circle, he never says anything that's... And I'm going to say, he never says anything that's wrong. No, like, you can see his point. Yeah. Like, you can see his yeah, point. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, humans are going to destroy us all. And then he shows clips from, like, the future from World War Two, which we I know... I wasn't big on that. No, enough. but, but. It, it aids his point. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying all he, all muggles are bad, but he's basically saying, look what the muggles do. And for all we know, it could be wizarding. In, yeah. in, it could be started by wizards, but he's using it. And the way he uses it, you can't actually argue. You can argue that there's good muggles out there, but still, this is happening and it's caused by 
the yeah. Muggle world. And like, there's some of that smoke, that skull bait thing. I don't get how that shows the feature of that. Or the um. Yeah, that was that it. was really weird. The skull. Or the um, newt investigating dirt and some of the goes I was like, what's what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Like, what's but those are like a couple of weird things out, but they don't really bug me too much. It's like, I don't, that's very a lot of plot convenience there. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuclear bomb, but now we're in the world. Now, Voldemort, you look at him, it's like, how the hell did they get Fathers in the first place? Yeah. We're in the world. You can see he's how he gets He's a businessman more than a tyrant, if that makes sense. And yeah. You can see why people went to his side. You can see why he got big. And that's what I really like about him as a villain. I feel like Joy did, did a very nice reserved performance for that. It was perfect for that role. Which I guess is why people are saying he's done, dulling it down. Because compared to his other roles, he is dulling it down. But again, it's needed for the character. He's that yeah. quiet crazy as opposed to boom crazy. Yeah, pretty much. And to be fair, everyone's just like, oh, I just see Joy Depp. It's like, I'll be honest, I never recognised Joy Depp. I'm sorry to see him as a Jack Sparrow. Like when I watched Nightmare on Elm Street, mm. like, I don't recognise him. He was in Murder on the Orient Express. He's the yeah. guy gets killed in it. I didn't know that was Johnny Depp until the credits. I do, but I did lose myself in that speech and I did see him as Grindelwald instead of Johnny Depp. Yeah. And at the end as well. Um, which, you know, we'll get to the big debate that you we'll had. We'll get to that, but I'm trying to get into the more positive stuff that I did enjoy. Oh, For example, what? oh, go on, sorry. Jude Law as yes. Dumbledore. I had my reservations about Jude Law. Never had him before. What saw him in King Arthur, which was terrible movie and he did not do much to change my opinion so i'm in this yeah he did a fantastic job there's something that bugs me about some of the responses about his performance but mm. the way he acts he's like dumbledore is a charming fatherly figure he's a bit of him and you can imagine he was a bit of a cheeky chap when he was younger as well yeah. especially with some of the stuff he's in later books with how he just trolls the ministry a lot this is what i love about the older new as well he's on good terms with both of them and yeah. he's respected by both scamanders do you know what i mean he's yeah. not I think it's about Scamander, but... Scamander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know me, I can't say any words for toffee, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's really interesting that he has that respect of both of them, which shows, even though they were both very different and very young and young in a way, you know, mm. he could get to anyone, which, again, I suppose is similar to Grindelwald. They can, he can talk to anyone and get through to anyone. Yeah, it's like very smooth. I just like him. Like when he's teaching the students, I love that scene where he's just like saying, hey, here's step one, I'll tell you what. Blah, blah, tell me two, blah, blah, tell me three. Hi, yeah. you forgot the first two things. <laughs> one thing I will say is, um, and this is this is one of the things I saw recently on the internet, and it's a very good point. Yeah. When did he start going from three-piece suit to robes? Because even when we see him in Tom Riddle's memory, he's wearing robes. I and mean, don't like get me wrong. Jude, Jude, Jude Law looks good in a suit. Do not get me wrong. But again, it's a continuity. I know it's a new film and it's a new slate, but it's still in that world, if that makes sense. I mean, he's got... So, 1929, the Chimney Suit was like 1942, timeline-wise, so... He's, he's, he's got a good 14 ten. years. He's yeah, got, yeah. He's, yeah, got, yeah. he's got time. 13 years, yeah, yeah. Not and he's got time to grow that beard out. But, like, with the... And whole, go white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got a yeah, by the look of him. But, <laughs> oh, Jude Law. Really enjoyed him as Dumbledore, and I do love the dynamic he had that said the vulnerability of Grindelwald the world as well. Mm-hmm. The one thing that bugs me... Is people saying, oh, why is Dumbledore not openly gay? And this is like, he is. He is quite clearly saying, I'm gay. I know people are saying that, oh, can't the women want something more open? And then? I get, I do get that. But the thing is, it's 1929. How many gay people were out in 1929? I mean, the argument is, we're well, they're so aggressive. It's like, but was it? I mean, look at what they're doing. They're causing wars and riots between themselves. It's not. Yeah, it's not perfect. They can use magic. It doesn't mean that changes the mental state. The human mind is all one and the same thing. And you've and got like, to think there's half, there's, you know, half bloods as well. So some of them are going to grow up in the muggle world not accepting it. Not everyone's a pure blood wizard who's forward thinking. Yeah, exactly. And um, like, I'll go back to Marie's point about I don't care what you say. It's, right, it's like, as long as it's Pivey character and not just your character. I see Dumbledore as Dumbledore. The scene where he says, I'm clo- we're close to them brothers. And the scene where he's looking in the mirror and said that. Seems to have changed its rules a bit. It's supposed to be his deepest desire, but it seems to be memories he's seeing. Mm. That was a bit strange. Can't just have a pencil for that. But anyway, it's like, yeah, we know Dumbledore's gay. There's enough hints in it. We don't. But again, that mirror shows your deepest desires. And maybe yeah, Dumbledore that- wanted to go back to when they were together yeah. and i'm gonna say together because they were yeah they were you could tell there's that thing with the holy hands that's like... i mean 
put it this way, if you see someone holding hands and doing that in the street, you'd call it a public display of affection. Yeah, exactly. So, so if it's not that, a public display of affection, people should be okay to do it in the street, in front of you, this close. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> I don't think many people would say things to that. But you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I get what you mean about what you're saying. Oz was saying that, oh, Dumbledore was as openly gay enough. I'm just like, what What are you looking for for something to be openly gay? Do we need Brokeback Mountain? Do we need a pretty cool I mean, Brokeback Mountain of it? The LGBT community are fighting against stereotypes. And people are wanting stereotypes. It doesn't make... I don't know, but... It was crazy. I mean, the context of this film, I thought they handled that thing really well. The only thing that I didn't like... The blood pack, right? I don't like the blood pack. Because <laughs> right, everyone's just like... Because everyone's just jumping saying, oh, I'm glad about the blood pack. Because everyone thinks seeing it without the blood pack, just jumping and saying, oh, I love him too much to fight him and it makes me weak. And it's like, oh, so I'm going to escape. It's like, no, have you, have you, ever, have you actually read the way explained to Harry why he didn't go in the first place? Dumbledore was ashamed of finding out who actually killed Ariana because never knew that. Was ashamed about his past creeping up in him because news flash guys dumb that actually wanted to take over the wizarding world with Grindelwald. That is canon. It's not established in this, but it is canon as a book reader. I know this, so there's another good point as well. Yeah, what's the other point? Because there's like three the, big things. Oh, why does it go for it? There's no. It's not just that. It's regarding the blood packs that yeah. JK's obviously forgotten about. But so the blood pack must have been made before Dumbledore's sister Ariana died, correct? Yeah. Of course. Right, because they didn't speak afterwards, correct? Yes. So, Dumbledore and Grindelwald couldn't fight one another, but yet there was this three-way duel. Dr- dr- With, without a fourth, the... This is, this, is, this is in the book, and hint, I think it's glazed over in the film. Um, but basically, Aberforth fought Grindelwald, who fought Dumbledore. Aberforth hated Grindelwald and went for one another. Grindelwald was under the impression that Dumbledore's sister, Ariana, who had a um, Obscurus, should be praised. You know, she shouldn't be hidden away. Um, Dumbledore was trying to protect both Grindelwald and Albus. Aberforth. <laughs> uh, sorry, Aberforth. But how could Albus protect Aberforth against Grindelwald if the blood pack was made? Well, you just made me hate that bit a whole lot more now. I'm just saying... I, 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 I told you I read into this an awful lot. <laughs> it's just the thing that Dumbledore... Like, he... This whole thing about, oh, we can't fight because we're blood pack. It's the only thing that's stopping. It's just like, no, you're ashamed that you want to take over the mother well at one point. You're worried about finding out who killed Ariana, like finding out for sure there. Mm. And most of you are ashamed. And some people, there's a lot of people out there that just don't do things or don't try again because of shame of what they're doing in the past. That's held them back a long time. Same with Dumbledore. He's only human. Just because he's the best in the world. He's only human. So taking all that complex reasoning because he wasn't afraid of dying he literally says to Harry oh I wasn't afraid of death I was scared of this and that yeah. and the other I wish I had the comics so I could actually read that bloody <laughs> paragraph right now but to narrow it down to oh it's just because we made a Blood Brothers pack that means we can't fight that irked me a little and it really did but not as much as well, I'm just going to get to it go for it right we're going to get to it so go for it. Credence mean- after all the bullshit of Oh, we might be a strange. He's been wanting oh, to go on about this since we started the yeah. podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't get this out. Oh, Dumbled, like, Credence, you're a little strange. Oh, no, you're not a little strange. Oh, I'm going to go with Grindelwald now. Oh, yeah, your brother's trying to stop you. Cuts to a shot of Albus. I'm like, no. Just, no. They better not do... And it's like, oh, yeah, here's Forks. By the way, you're done with those long-lost brother. JK, are you fucking kidding me? So Are I've you done, fucking kidding me? I've done research, and like I said, Credence would have to have been born around 80, uh, 98, 97. But as far as I'm aware, um, Dumbledore's sister actually died. Well, this is the thing. The rumour is that if it is Dumbledore's brother, it has to be father-related. It, it, his father died in jail, as far as Rita Skeeter was confer- confirmed in the books. Yeah. As I think in, later on in the films it was said, but that means Dumbledore's father had to have an affair or had a child out of wedlock in prison for Credence to be there. And that would that would work age-wise. However, the other rumour is it's actually, say, a... Um, the, I can't even remember the name of it. The big black... Obscurus. Obscurus. Yeah. The Obscurus passed from... Um, 
uh, Ari- Ariana. I'm saying Ariana. Yeah, Ariana. That's name, yeah. Passed from Ariana to Credence. And that somehow, and that makes, somehow him makes him the brother. The other option is it's because Ariana. It was dark in the book. She was attacked by three muggles. Yeah. Now it just says attacked. Yeah. Knowing how these films are going, people have rumored that she was more than attacked, and it um, could have actually yeah. been. A child for Christ, Christ's sake! But again, JK. for that to happen, it would have had to be two years. There's, there's two years between her getting attacked by the Muggle boys and her dying. Yeah. So again, that would have to be sorry. Had to be in quick. Yeah, because she died in I think it was 99 or 98. No, she died in 98. So Credence would have had to be born in 97 or 98. We know this, but again, that means that she must have been attacked by the Muggles around 97, 98. Which again, as far as I'm aware, in the books they've moved there for a lot. They moved to Grodrick Hollow for a while, not just yeah. a few months, but could be wrong. But um, then it would be brother, as in sort of a translation, loose translation of, you know how people say, oh, he's my uncle, even though he's not my uncle type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing, sort of brother in arms rather than brother. I mean, Those are the three things I've heard. Those are the only three things. I don't it could be related no to Dumbledore. Sense. That's the only way it could be related to Dumbledore, or he could be a Dumbledore. There's a lot. Of, right, this one's going to. Or Aberforth has a son that we don't know about either. Or you know, I'm just saying that. <laughs> right, so you have the son, but come out like the Dumbledore family tree for dummies that we've been taught for the last since 27, 2007 was when the last book came out. 2007, around that time, because I remember getting on the day it came out and waiting like a week. <laughs> Oh, amateur! I read it in a few hours. Oh, sh- shut up! Shut up! I was joking. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, where was I? Okie dokie. Uh, sorry about the awkward cut there, by the way. But I just walked through, so I had to pause a few minutes. But anyway, so a mystery Dumbledore. So you're telling me, J.K. You're telling me that the eleven years. So Dumbledore family three for dummies. You have uh, Percival Dumbledore. And mother Kendra Dumbledore. Um, Ariana's attacked by Mobbles, as Liz has said. Uh, Percival gets pissed off, goes and basically curses the shit out of them boys. Uh, gets Ken- sent to Azkaban. Yeah, Azkaban. Azkaban dies there. Um, Kendra dies looking after Ariana because naturally she has Obscurus in her. So it's down to Albus and Aberforth to look after Ariana. And Dumbledore's resent- like, Albus is resentful because he's got to look after her and he's a sort of brilliant mind. So basically, this is established in Rita Skeeter's tell-all story, that turns out to be true, and Dumbledore in limbo, whatever the hell that thing was, has no reason to lie to Harry anymore, tells him straight up for the first time ever all the things he wants to know. That was the whole point. Dumbledore had no more secrets from Harry. Rita Skeeter can find anything out about anybody. Yeah, and apparently neither Dumbledore or Rita Skeeter thought to mention, oh yeah, there's another Dumbledore brother. So your whole, like... Oh, it might be an Ariana kid. I'm pretty sure Dumbledore will mention, oh, yeah, um, Ariana, the illegitimate child, because of those muggle boys. The obscurus going to create his body is dumb. Just, JK, I, I think... know it's such a world. I know you can do what the fuck you want with it, because you wrote it, fair enough, but don't give us this fucking canon <laughs> since 2007 establishing this bullshit. And then just say, oh, yeah, that shit I've been giving you down your throat for years, guys. Yeah, that that's not real. There's actually another one. There's more to it. It's like... Not everything has to be a fucking connotation to the fucking original books. Yeah, this was... Why is... This was meant to be lying? This was meant to be something new, something different. It was meant to link, but in a far sort of way. It was like a history book, but in film content. And that was a really exciting thing to see how the Wizarding World was back then. And I'm honestly really interested to see how Dumbledore gets Fox. Can't fault that bit. But there's no reason for Credence... It just the other the other there is a there is a fourth one I forgot to say yeah. the other Dumbledore. Um, yeah, give me give me more bullshit. Come on, Dumbled- feed me the bullshit. <laughs> Albus and uh, Abathoth they had an auntie. They had a long lost auntie. Now there is a woman on the boat for the boat scene where, yeah. you know, the mother dies, the child dies, um, Lestrange switches the babies. So that very well could be. Percival's sister. However, there's nothing to confirm it. There's nothing to deny it. It would get around the Rita Skeeter finding yeah. everything out about Dumbledore's wife because, again, Percival's long sister, lost yeah. long lost, knew nothing about. All they knew is that he had a sister somewhere in the world. 
So it would get around everything. But again, he uses the word brother. Yeah. Even if you use the word family, like, you know, your family name is family important. Your family is plotting against you. Something like that, or a member of your family. Maybe. The way he said brother, it just, it raises too many questions. Yeah, exactly. So if it's longer sister, fine. Then by all means, stick that in there. But <laughs> again, brother. Like just, it doesn't. It doesn't add up. Long lost sister could be interesting. It could really be interesting. Could be, but because then we could find out what happened to. Like why has Grindelwald had to be a Dumbledore before? It was just an obscurus that. Remember Grindelwald, had this obscurus next in the whole fucking first film, and then realized he had magic in him until he exploded. Which and now in itself knows, seems impossible. And now everything he knows about him, he so he knows everything. Like, oh, I know your heritage. So Grindelwald. And there's only been a year be between these two films as well. Yeah. So, well, two years, I think. No, oh, two years. Yeah, yeah no, you're right, two, two years. years. But the other... Stop, stop fucking know. with your canon, man. Just, <laughs> just stop it. JK, we love you. Maybe not you so much on Twitter, but in terms of the way you brought us, we love it. Stop fucking with your own canon. One thing I forgot to say that I did love, and this is a little side note, and it's got nothing to do with your big rant, and I'm it's sorry. It's fine, it's fine. The Lestrange family tree. The book that is open resembles the wallpaper in the Black family house. Ah, uh, that's to be expected. I like that. I like that a lot. Then it explains the lilies and things like that. But um, I am curious as to how, like, which Lestrange Bedrick's married into. That's an interesting one. Well, it's like Rodolphus Lestrange, I think his name is. They've basically killed off all the Lestranges. That's what I don't get. They've killed off all the Lestranges. Well, they the do Lestranges. say there's the um, that main Lestrange that did the Imperius Curse, but they never established if he has a brother or sister there, so that he could just have, like, another brother that was actually in that right very Lestrange. true, yeah. So... That I don't mind so much. Mm. I just hate the fact that people are saying, oh, how has Bertrand come to us? Like, Bertrand's married into the Blacks, yeah, so no. she's not even a direct it's, relative. No, I wanted to say Regulus. But, um, yeah, it's like Rodolphus Lestrange, something yeah. like that. Um, and it's just, where does he fit on this family tree? Because I couldn't, in all fairness, I didn't, when the film comes out, I will pause it, and that's sad. I will pause it and see if he's on the family tree. Yeah. Because that's something that you have to do, I think. No, because that is that. Because I had that. Because one of Tonks, like, Tonks' mother is like a relative of that family tree as well so but the Weasleys well, are always also related yeah I just like the McLa- the McLaggers <laughs> the yeah. McLaggers, like great uncle like granddad or something just there being everyone's related this is how Dumbledore has like another brother we didn't know about because everyone's related right Josh apparently because I always got to marry each other so they don't die out basically uh, but yeah, yeah. Now, as you can tell I, I hate that twist at the end like the film it was okay up until that point. I was like, oh, there's a few things that irk me, but you're, you're a clean slate film. You're, you're a clean slate. The thing that I know the last fire pop is how much they miss from the books. This clean slate, you can link to books slightly, but there's no way. But now you're messing with an actual canon that's been set up in those books. So again, you brought book Nazi out of me once again, and I thought it would be impossible. So thank you. In all fairness, he was a lot more angry the first three times we had this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Facebook all the capital letters it was great oh god just, just. <laughs> but it's right when I watch a film like if I hate the film I just walk it out you know when I really hate a twist when I'm sat in my chair and about two seconds of the credits come out I just say bullshit <laughs> didn't yell it I wanted to yell it but I'm like this kid's here I can't I was like bullshit see but I was like no it was good it was good it was good but I was like no I can't get over that twist that was for me it picked me turning. up but that's my that's my like researcher inside me because I hated the Queenie bit after after the blue fire after everything that oh also Nicholas from Lyle we didn't mention him love oh, yeah. him love Nicholas he from Lyle nice, yeah. I can't wait to see more of him in the next few films but um yeah after that scene I was there going I don't like it I I, I actually hate a Harry Potter film and I, I can't understand why and you like all the original films <laughs> yeah I, I think the originals are all right because I take them as films I agree the books are so much better um, but then again, the sixth book's one of my favourites, and people hate that book. So, you know, I'm just weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine, but... But, um, yeah, no, I was going to say, and then by the time the Dumbledore thing came on, I literally was just going, oh! and I, I, I like to research things on the internet, as you've probably gathered from yeah. this. You know what the actual most depressing thing about this whole saga is right now, though? What? Well, it's the Fantastic Beast saga, and we've spent <laughs> about 50 minutes, give or take, talking about it, all these characters, and we've not spoke about Newt hardly at all. <laughs> and he's advertises the face. And Edby Renbane is a fantastic actor. And he's great as Newt. He is. And and I do like how it's 
hit it but never like outspoken that he might be on the spectrum just because how awkward he is and how he's like very shy around women it's his it's his behaviors again it doesn't have to be said outright but he never makes eye contact with anyone no ever he he looks he looks like this a lot. and even like the only Dodges thing he questions. looks at is yeah the only thing he looks at is animals and even then he's still you know shy and respectful but yeah. um which i like because with lestrange he could look her in the eye but he couldn't with many others yeah. um like he looks at teen there with the whole time and this thing that was cute as fuck oh, uh, that was cute that, that, that was we, wholesome we, we were there in the cinema going don't say it don't say it and then she said it because she read his book and oh my god that was another hat that was like queenie in the first one with jacob you, you were just like oh yes so they're probably going to ruin that next film oh, um, i don't want to get this started i mean they do end up together it is confirmed well in canon it is confirmed but we know jk likes to change canon so <laughs> don't get me started jk just stop changing the canon well we didn't mention the baby nifflers though you oh, do well, realize yeah the baby nifflers just like there at the start for a cute thing and then they're just not in it again the sign says i've taken the nifflers but you don't in all fairness the, the animals were all in the first part of the film and that was it yeah like the first few scenes and you see the nifflers steal a little blood thing oh, at the end so which was cute. and then he gets wounded and that's quite sad and everything but no, I think Newt is very amused. This same with Jacob. I think he was actually a lot sweet. He was great in the first one. Loved. He was like best boy in the first one. He was very comic <laughs> relief in the first one, and then in this one he was a lot more. He was a serious he was character. Like, he was more grounded. He was There's a really serious character. that bit where he's talking character. about Queenie and love and the bar, and he was like, "Sorry, you say something." <laughs> <laughs> Just like, bro, you deserve a slap for that. <laughs> now, honestly, this was a letdown of a movie, and. I found both to bent out the bits I really didn't like because there's good stuff in there is some re- like the effects and the animals and the creatures, very good. Like some music, nice the soundtrack was amazing again, yeah. as all Harry Potter films. Yeah, again, it's just like there's there's like four or five different plot threads. So mm. many characters all jumbled together, and then you decide to fuck with some canon as well. And Presto, you get a mess that it's got like mixed. I think it's rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score is like positive like 70 odd percent yeah it's very mixed and i think it's one of those things of if you don't know harry potter in and out you will love but for those of us that know the canon it's a bit hit and miss it really is because i i'm excited to see how things develop in future films but you really hated it didn't you i i i'll probably still watch your films anyway yeah but I do want to see JK has come back to this because apparently every time someone calls her out and some bullshit she pulls out, she just gets so defensive about it. So I don't ask you to respond to this one. And uh, to be fair, I try, I try to, I'll be honest, I try, like with the critical community, I try to separate JK from Harry Potter at this point because yeah, I'm not, yeah. not going to get into my opinions on the woman <laughs> herself because. Uh. Yeah, there's the questionable morals, I think is the right word. Yeah, but there we go. There you go, but that can bring us to the world anyway. The world's been <laughs> fantastic. Just oh, please stop toying with the canon. Don't give us a online portfolio of canon and then be like, oh, forget that canon. <laughs> forget that canon. I'll be guilty yeah. of years of dedication. McGonagall being the main one there. Well, I think the only thing that, like, I know Star Wars fans hate to use Star Wars films. I think the only thing Star Wars related that George Lucas really messed with canon wise was the whole Forces and Chlorians or whatever. That's the only thing I ever hear that like, people get angry about, really. Pretty much. And, Anything you know, Jar Jar like, acting-wise. Yeah, but still, it's <laughs> canon-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It's, it's the concept of force that he messed with that people didn't like. Yeah. But apart from Fusil Tech, there's nothing major. This one's like, changing when characters were born. See at least the next. Oh, this guy has got a long-lost brother and this unbreakable vow because apparently turned on and off, apparently. Oh, that's the other thing. The blood pact is basically an unbreakable vow. We were talking about that as yeah. well. Yeah. What's the difference between a blood pact and an unbreakable vow? You can break the thing, you can chain the blood in there, basically. Well, no one's oh, done it so I'm... far. In fact, no one's done it so far because Dumbledore has to think about how to break it. It was just like, oh, I feel like I could break that. Though I do love the moment where Newt pulls it out and it was like, how the fuck did to get that? It's like, <laughs> I love Drew Law and Dumbledore, but he's like, he needs to get all fast, he needs to wear robes fast. Yeah. But I think we need to see the more vulnerable side of Drew Law. I do wish, I kind of wish they had like a whole half hour if we're gonna do like rather than the Hogwarts segment because we'll let the strangers pull up and kill her off yeah they should have just had a whole they need to have it in the next one where they have a whole like half hour or something dedicated to just the younger Dumbledore and younger Grindelwald Grindelwald. can you see the younger ones maybe a young uh, maybe even all the kids so you have Aberforth and you have um 
give us the whole double girl backstory. Give us some sense of things. Cause if they ever show that full battle, that would be amazing. They need the to. One where they kill yeah, double girl yeah. sister. I um, think that, I hear that would be amazing. I always picture it as like a little scrap. You know, when families fight and like you just start throwing fists about. Well, the only way like I can that. think about getting around this blood pack is if Dumbledore was only bouncing curses off, so not fighting back, but using a defense spell. Possibly. And then maybe that's what bounced the curse. But again, nothing but can stop a killing are, curse. The ones are still crossing. Yeah, like and they're still exchanging spells, and you can tell. And nothing can stop a killing curse. And the thing in the book is Dumbledore doesn't know if he killed his sister. He says it could have been any one of us. Yeah. We were all shooting spells. Or Aberforth. Someone says it. I remember reading it in the book. It's a matter yeah. of anyone could have done it. Yeah, Aberforth says it, I believe. And the thing is, no one wanted to kill Ariana. Grindelwald wanted her praised. Ab, ab, uh, yeah, Grindelwald wanted her free. He didn't ab, want her locked up. Yeah, Aberforth wanted her protected. Albus... Just wanted his family to be yeah, safe. Yeah, just wanted to be safe. He didn't really want her out in public because oh, of his... Fun fact, guys. Sorry, the question. I know, it's all right. Um, it's never explained in the original series because you literally see in the same was like, oh, is that your sister? I was like, are you your sister? Like, oh, yeah, double talk for slaughter before my sister there. <laughs> and yeah, Dumbledore shot and killed me at the end of the Cave of Sith one. That whole thing of what he's seeing is literally that fight. That fight where Ariana dies is why Dumbledore loses his mind in the Sith one. And that has never, ever been mentioned in any of the films. So I feel like, I don't know if you have a I feel like the film only people are going to be missing out a lot here and they'll probably not get why I'm so damn passionate about this whole backstory. Yeah. Because no, I know it's... about the seventh films the most. It's split the two. It's like, how do you miss out the entire double backstory in two films? I think <laughs> what's so important about that story and the Grindelwald and Dumbledore story is Dumbledore's not a nice guy. Hmm. People think he's wonderful. He is he's not... awful. He's, when you he's, think he's about up his it. Own ass. <laughs> he, yeah, he puts Harry, and this is going back to the original thoughts, he puts Harry in danger for how many years? Even in the... In, in, again, in the books, he says, I could have told you in your first, second, third, fourth, fifth year, but I didn't tell you in your first, fourth, uh, first second, third, fourth, fifth year. I just like being year. a troll. I just yeah. love the memes about it now. Yeah. But, you <laughs> so know. I'm, I'm going to troll you. It's fine. Basically. Oh, Snape, you've got to kill me, but you can't tell anyone that you have to kill me. So I'm going to spend the entire seven book thinking that you're the villain for a very last that twist. But... There you go, Crimes of Grim the World. I'll still, unfortunately, watch the remaining ones because <laughs> got her, but don't make me mad again, please. That it was, it's one of those films where I just started liking it less and less the more I thought about it after I left. Mm. I, unlike Infinity War, where Doctor Strange says it's the only way, and I walk walking down the street, I was like, holy shit, Doctor Strange knew what it was doing. <laughs> Wish I could have discussed that in a spoiler review, but I didn't have guessed it at the time, so. Aww. And now, hard to get people, thanks again for coming on here. Ah, oh, it's all but right, anyway, anytime, especially when it's Harry Potter. Yeah, definitely, but that's us done with that part of the thing. But we have other <laughs> things to talk about. I'm sorry, I ran on about Harry Potter a lot. It's fine, it looks like we've got nearly an hour, but to be fair, that's because we had other like, interruptions and all that. Mm-hmm. I'm getting sidetracked. It's going to be fun to edit. A- anyway, there have been a few trailers this month. I could talk about Stanley a bit, but honestly, I feel like it's too late to start doing the tributes. I did a tweet about it, and God rest his soul, Stanley, it made the world a better place. Anyway. We had a few trailers come out. It seems to be a big rise in um, live action remakes and just anything being made live action. We had Detective Pikachu release the trailer. And when I first saw the concept of it, I saw it announced. Ryan was going to be Detective Pikachu. I was like, no way is a Pokemon going to work in live action. Um, we've both seen the trailer now. Yeah. And I'm not going <laughs> to I still don't think it's going to be a good film. No, I, don't I think, think it's, it's going great. to be absolutely terrible, but I think I'm going to but, enjoy it a hell of a lot. Because mainly because the Pokemon look Good. I just I did not think they were super live action, but looking at all of them, they actually fit in well. Well, I like the fact um, in, in the trailer it said I don't know if it'll be in the film, but when Pikachu finally realizes that someone can hear him, he goes, "It's been so long," which makes me think, especially with the cap, is it Ash's Pikachu? <laughs> and part of me is like, "Oh my gosh, please let it be." But again, it's one of those films that it's not going to be great as a plot. It. Oh, it might not be great as a plot. It might not be great, like, chronologically. It's going to have flaws in it, but you've got to watch that. And everyone who loves Pokemon is just going to go... Yeah, like, just look at the trailer. Like, I mean, just say, I'm so lonely. I've been so lonely. Yeah. Like, I don't have to get around the fact that there's Deadpool's voice coming out of Pikachu's mouth, but... <laughs> I love how cute they made Pikachu on the slide. Then again, like, they said that we, get, we wouldn't get over Johnny Depp as Grindelwald, and we did. But yeah, no, I don't think they could have found anyone better for Pikachu's voice. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Like, 
I just love how they got Ken Watanabe playing like the teacher in it. Um, yeah. Everyone knows him as the letting them fight guy from Godzilla, but he's actually a very good actor. I think he's been. He always had small roles, but he does well in these small. He's a bit like John Bernthal. Yeah. When well, he's not the poster on Netflix, he's like, just doing a lot of small roles. Um, it, it's really good. It, it is really good. And I don't look at the Pokemon themselves. There's that line of Bulbasaur's. They look great. Charizard oh, looks amazing. Bulbasaur. Jigglypuff's there looking pissed off. Do you know what? Jigglypuff <laughs> singing in a restaurant is like the best. I think it is a restaurant, isn't it? That she's it singing in. And I'm just there like, that is just, imagine her in the night time like showed up. It would be brilliant. Just everyone going in the sink. It's just seen in size proportions as well because you cut to a wide shot and they're actually just like some Pokemon are towering over the humans. Yeah. Like they're taking into account the different like the size tar- proportions. Do you know what made me really happy in the trailer? And this, this is so sad. You know how annoying Mr. Mime is? Yeah. You know when Pikachu jumps at him and you can just tell as soon as Pikachu jumped what was going to happen and then just <laughs> Pikachu sliding down this invisible wall. It, I just can't, I can't even describe how happy I am. It's just... I'm actually almost... Yeah, no, it, it's just great. Oh, really? I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm definitely going to see it. I, it might be a surprise because technically it is a video game movie. Yeah, no, technically it is. And if it does like a Guardians, because uh, I, I went to watch Guardians just for Raccoon and Machine Gun, that's going to be one of the best films in the MCU. Mm. It could do it if it plays it right and gives the right tone. Cause yeah. Because gave the right tone in this trailer. Yeah. Really did give the right tone. It did. And uh, I don't know, it just, in all fairness, I'm hoping that the big climax scene where they've got to fight the body, Mr. Mime just comes in with a boot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that would be like, because it's such a terrible Pokemon, but it's got such a useful move, which is so annoying. Do you know Imagine what I mean? if it was just one Mr. Mime in the first Pokemon movie where Mewtwo and Mew are battling, Ash runs in the middle, Mr. Mime just shows Get up Mr. and just Mime. like, Jim. just like, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no sad moment, we're just going to have Mr. Mime here blocking these. Oh, don't, it's so great. No, I'm looking forward to it. It might be interesting. It might be bad. It probably will be bad, but... I'm going to watch it. It's I think it's going to be so bad it's good. I'm just I think gonna it's going to be one of those. I'm hoping it's going to be a bit like the Power Rangers movie. The mm. Because re- I actually, I could tell it wasn't the best movie because tonally it was a mess, but character-wise and as a it fan... It was enjoyable. I thought it was very good. That like, as a fan, and just for the characters, because with the Power Rangers, you watch the original show, it's like, how are you guys friends again? Yeah. Whereas this one, was like, I buy you all being friends here. Yeah. And the cameras at the end were very good as well. Yeah. So... I thought I hope it's sort of that scenario where the critics are gonna hate it but the fans are gonna love it. I'm hope it's that kind of scenario. Yeah. Again, it, as long as it's enjoy I know a movie's got to have plot, it's got to have sense, but as long as it's enjoyable, that is the main cause yeah. of a movie. If you would watch it again, then it's a good movie. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, straight up. And there's been a couple of more Disney trailers that have come out recently as well. Um Dumbo directed by Tim Burton and Last night, Lion King released a trailer as well. I've not seen the Dumbo trailer, Liz has not seen the Lion King one, so I'm going to show us the Lion King one first. Cause then we'll both watch the uh, Dumbo one. You've not seen the Dumbo one? No. I'm really behind on my trailers, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, I figured. This is what you get when you spend too much time researching Harry Potter things and locked in your room. Oh, God. Pretending you don't exist. <laughs> that that <laughs> is a King trailer. Sorry, I couldn't resist the reference. It's fine. So we're just going to whack up the Lion King trailer here and turn that up. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. But a king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king.
Number one, number one, where you give your brief thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I'm not going to lie. And I don't know if it's because I'm not in a cinema with surround sound. Mufasa's voice didn't sound as fatherly to me. Like, do you know what I mean? It didn't sound all-knowing, if that makes sense. Oh, no, 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 powerful. Yeah. I mean, it's still James Earl Jones that's voicing, but again, as you can tell... Maybe, again, in, the thing is with surround... Uh, cinemas can make things sound so loud. Oh, I yeah. mean, you worked in... Especially IMAX. Yeah. <laughs> so it... I'm not going to let that stop. It does look good. Can I tell you what honestly bugged me? Wow. It wasn't a coconut that he broke open. <laughs> it's meant to be a coconut that he breaks open. I know, it was like they're doing a shot for shot remake, live action there. Yeah, it, it just... was shot for shot in the trailer, and then just... I was like, no, it's meant to be a... Not a... Oh. It's I guess because there's no weird paint in coconuts. That yeah, I know, I know. Disney World. And now, as you can probably tell, like James Earl Jones, I think his voice is getting a bit tired because you see Darth Vader these days. He still voices Darth Vader, but mm. he doesn't sound as the deep end. Yeah, the that's as... what I mean. It wasn't as deep as I thought it was going to be. Nah, but like I say, I'm excited for it. I'm still going to watch it. It looks good, but I don't expect it to look good because it's the same team that made the Jungle Book remake, mm. which was better than the original Jungle Book, I think. Yeah, it was. I'm just. But it's because the first ju- the new Jungle Book added different layers to the story. This one. It's already got a concise story, so I don't know what they can really add to it. Yeah, I mean, and it's also based off Hamlet, isn't it? From that's the original. Yeah, that's the original source material. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I am in. I am excited about the cast. I think they should have got Mr. Bean back to do um. Zazu. Yeah, I think they should have got him <laughs> back, Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> I think if they got him back to do it, that would have been like icing on the cake. But I can see why they didn't, because they didn't want it to be. Do you I'm know, they want it to be different. They want it to be the first one, but they want it to be different to the first one. I am a bit confused why Seth Rogen is, bit, is second billing in it. Because <laughs> he's only voicing Pumba. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Pumba's great, but he's only in like, the second half of the film. Don't, because I'm going to be singing the songs in my head. <laughs> when I was in your... No, I'm, going, I'm not going to burst I into... The young warthog. Warthog. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> but now, that Simba though looks cute as hell. Simba looks very cute. I saw. I was I like, like the little no. paw. It was cute. And then like big Simba at the end there. I looked at how they're gonna do the cloud thing. There. Yeah, in the stars and things like that. Like, it's not like a T. It's not gonna show you the look. You can tell it's gonna be like trying to shop sock. I I hope it's more Jungle Book live action than Beauty and the Beast live action, which was just literally the same thing. I didn't even go see that because I didn't want it to be ruined for me. <laughs> Is that bad? It wasn't. Bad. It was just a case of there was nothing because with the Jungle Book remake, special. it added more to the story. Like mm. a reason Shake on hated people gave Car more to do. Yeah. Like the original Jungle Book, you watch it back, there's a lot of random scenes. Mm. It gives more relationship between Mowgli and the wolves, that kind of stuff. And with the the and the Beast remake, the only thing that was different about it is the Beast had a song near the end, which mm. was really good. But for the most part, it's like Emma Watson, Emma, Emma Watson, Emma Watson, more Emma Watson. Yeah, pretty much. And she's fine in it, but she's not the best singer. But. It's, it's I'm gonna ju- it made a lot reserve of money. judgment on that. It made a lot of money and it was fine, it just wasn't inspired. And hmm. I love you, McGregor, but you could tell he struggled with the French accent because a bit when they become humans at the end, and you could tell the one bit where you see him speaking as a person, mm. you could tell it's been, um, what's it called now, ADR? Yeah. Addition, additional dialogue recorded. Yeah, yeah. You could tell. So I did love Ian McKellen's Carlos Worth though. Mm. It was great as Carlos Worth. <laughs> but now we're going to see our, well, my hero, <laughs> probably your hero, we're both hell bound cards. I mean, Tim Burton, ex goth kid for the both of us, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, we, should, <laughs> we should get a photo up at some point. <laughs> there oh, is... let's whack it up. Oh, no, gosh, there but... is a photo of us both as goth. There is actually, yeah, on that one yeah. layout, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but like, this is Tim Burton and he's doing the right live action remake of Dumbo and. Who remembers the that um, drunk Dumbo scene? I am curious <laughs> to see what Tim Burton does with that. It's going to be interesting. Well, let's let's trade them. Let's get a <laughs> quick thought on it. So it's going to be quite a couple of moments here, guys.
something. She needs us. Look at me. We're gonna bring your mama home. Oh no. That song gets me every time. I love the Tim Burton effect to it. I know. I, I'll be straight. I've not seen a Tim Burton movie in years. The only things I really remember is um, like that scene with the mother. Yeah, and the same. <laughs> yeah. um, the drunken. My eyes were close to watering as well. <laughs> your, eyes, your eyes are already watering, mate. <laughs> um, that, was, that was very cute. I thought it was Colin Farrell. I'm looking at the cast of Snap. Yeah. Colin Farrell. Yeah. I was really good at Widows, by the way. We actually have a review up as well. Just say, just, check it out. I, I, I just can't unsee him as the uh, most evil dude. Huh. Oh, well, he was quite good. Um, yeah, no, I, I imagine him being really good. There's, and There's no bell on Cartman, is it? Yeah. That's who it was. I'm dead in the beat. <laughs> I was all thinking, I was like, is that? Is, yeah. is it? Is it? Yeah. No, um, um, it's quite strange to see A, a Tim Burton film without Helen Bottom Carter, and B, one that isn't. It wasn't as gothic I as mean, I thought. Cloudy Dumbo looks. Oh yeah, no, there's yeah. elements of goth there, but compared to his other stuff, that was quite yeah. He's not normal. Alice, he's not Alice in Wonderland. It. No, it was it was rather normal, which was nice. Yeah. That's um, I th I think it's nice that he's working with the children's side and the imagination rather than the dark adult side. Does that make sense? Because yeah. a lot of his works dark adulty. I mean, the real Tim Burton films had a lot of dark moments. I can't remember being a big favourite of mine when I was a kid. No, I, I remember watching it once and I, I don't think I ever watched it again, which is terrible. I know all the songs I, and main scenes. and. It looks like they traded the mouse out for those two kids. I can't remember there being many kids in the original. Like, not too many kids anyway that were looking after it. It looks like they've got rid of the crows as well. Yeah, and I don't see the, the crows are in there. And there was the mouse that was with him. He's not there. It doesn't look like... Maybe they've put the... I mean... That's nice that had, a hu had a human touch to it. Mm. Like, uh, did Colin Farrell have one arm in that as well? Yeah, he Instead did. Having one arm, yeah. okay, uh, that's a bit far fetched, but. <laughs> well, it was a circus, I guess, so. I mean, Maybe a lion like... bit it off. <laughs> well, I like it, but that dumb one's looking really cute there. I, I, I'm really excited. I did get goosebumps watching that one. So I'm excited to see. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think the fact I've not actually seen the original in a number of years now. Mm. I think that's good to go into the film, though. Almost blind, yeah. Yeah, because this so, is one of the things with the Potter series. Yeah. Knowing all the books, it's sort of annoying. It does. In the back of your mind, it's like, I'm going to see this impartially. Like, with the first Fantastic Beast, I remember that scene where... That was amazing. I, I love that. Uh, there's that scene where Grace is with Credence and Grace pulls out the FDR's necklace and they try and cut it off the screen so you bottom of the screen and you see the symbol I'm just like that's Grindelwald <laughs> but straight up I'm just like that's him <laughs> so it away. that big twist I'm just like we keep going to the book Credence and you could tell they knew they were doing that because they tried to hide it at the bottom of the yeah, screen it, it was so quick the sort of glance of it and then near the end they sort of lingered on it more because the big reveal was coming up and you were just there like I know it, it's fine <laughs> well that right there that was Interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Though, yeah. come on, Disney, where's my Atlantis remake? That is so underrated. Oh. Is Atlantis? You know I'm a steampunk fan. As yeah. soon as Atlantis comes in, steampunk, steampunk, and more steampunk. Right. Not Atlantis too. Leave that one. But first one, you have a. I've actually saw it was a while ago. Actually, there was a. I've never seen. I, I got five minutes into the second one, cringed, no. and turned it off. Yeah, just don't, don't watch. Don't watch second <laughs> of any Disney animated film. But there's like this art of this like. All the characters from Atlantis and the a act counterpart for who would play him in live action. Yeah. I was like, get that cast. I'd really like to see. Um, it's not Disney, but Anastasia. Yeah, Anastasia was one of my favorite films as a kid. I think it was it Fox. 
It might be in Fox. But honestly, I think a live action remake of that. Tim Burton would be good on the Anastasia front. I don't know. I just saw, I just remember there was that weird villain, the white bat, and the train scene. Do you know the weird villain was actually Doc from Back to the Future? Wait, that was. Yeah, it's the same actor. Oh, Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd plays a lot of villains. It's like when you watch Roger Rabbit, it's like, that's Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> I think Christopher Lloyd actually outlived. Oh, no, what's his name? Bod Hodgkiss or something like that? Did he? Yeah, because Bob Hodgkiss died a while ago. Yeah. But they're planning to make him Roger Rabbit too. But there we go. So, in conclusion, live action remakes are looking nice, looking pretty. Looking good. I would say out of the three, I think Dumbo has the most potential out of the three of those. Yeah, I think Lion King. Pikachu has... needs to be a surprise. Yeah, I think Pikachu will be enjoyable, but lack on plot. I think Dumbo will have an all roundedness, and Lion King. I'm just going to wait and see. I'm not going to give my opinion on Lion King until it... Because, again, I like the cast and I'm a massive fan of Donald Glover. Yeah. Uh, like he was, he's actually one of the best things in the solo movie. <laughs> I, I honestly... I've loved him since Community Days and followed his career. And I think he's he's, he's just... He's got everything. The full package. He's good. <laughs> and, uh, just with Lion King, the fact that it's kind of guys the best animated Disney film ever. It's not going to be easy to choose the film, so... No. I'm interested in it, but... We'll see how that goes and includes them for Crimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is the November episode out. If there's some trailers late this month, I might get people around to review it if I can get people. But there we go. Go try to be more frequent with these. Try to be more constant on my uploading, guys. <laughs> and thank you again, Liz, for coming on. More than welcome. Honestly, I'll leave your Instagram tag there as well because she does a lot of nice cosplay. Please check it out. And Jake, you, you bake as well, don't you? I, I do a lot of baking. My cosplay is sort of on hold until cosplay... Well, the conventions are all till next year now, so... Oh, yeah, conventions, yeah, it's like gone now. I might improve my ivy. We do a good ivy and penguin. We do, we do. <laughs> oh, I need to, like, get some way to go for C2E2 again. The last season of Gotham's coming out, and I will be doing reviews on that, I think, as well. Probably in full <laughs> outfit. But anyway, this is that Spike signing off, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment about anything we discussed down below and share it around if you wish and subscribe because i'm nice <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys you have a good one Bye.